Good morning, or good afternoon, everyone, depending on when you're watching this. Um, welcome to day three of our read-alouds. I hope things are going well for everyone, and uh, you're finding some time to maybe get outside. You know, every day um, we do go downstairs into our basement and lift weights or do some kind of exercise down there, and then later on we'll go outside and we play catch or do some sprints or ride our bikes or something like that, something to get outside. It's a little rainy today, and uh, actually it's a little too dark in here, so I had to set up some lights. Of course, I don't have a, uh, a movie studio in here or anything, so I'm kind of making do with what I have at the time. So it might look a little red from these lights. They're kind of uh, a little bit too strong, but uh, we'll, we'll keep going. You can, I guess you can still hear me and see the book, um, so I guess that's what matters. Today, we are going to read a Caldecott medal winner called Beagle, The Unimaginary Friend by Dan Santat. Uh, this book came out a couple of years ago and uh, won the uh, Caldecott Medal from the American Library Association as the best picture book of the year. You know, best is a little bit subjective. Who knows what the best is? The best is what you like. Um, but I do think this is a very good uh, little story and uh, the illustrations are really great and uh, quite colorful. And it's about an imaginary or maybe he's an unimaginary friend. We'll see. So here we go. Beagle. The Adventures of Beagle. And there is the title page. And we see some stars. It's like nighttime. And what's interesting is sometimes we see a falling star when you're outside. You know, you see a shooting star, what we might refer to as a falling star. But in here, these appear to be going up. And that's maybe a little bit of foreshadowing what's going to happen later in the book. whole bunch of, I don't know what they are. I mean, this is definitely a, uh, an octopus, and that's a panda bear. This one's a puzzle piece. I don't know what kind of imaginary friend that would make, but there's that picture again. Here we go. He was born on an island far away where imaginary friends were created. Here they lived and played, each eagerly waiting to be imagined by a real child. Every night he stood under the stars, hoping for his turn to be picked by a child and given a special name. He waited for many nights. Oh, look at, looks like a tiger. A tiger looks like he's been chosen. He's going up. But his turn never came. Poor Beagle. His mind filled with thoughts of all the amazing things that were keeping his friend from imagining him. So rather than waiting, he did the unimaginable. Look at that picture. That is an amazing illustration. Looks like one of the dragons we might see around Chinese New Year. It's really amazing. He sailed through unknown waters and faced many scary things. But thinking about his friend gave him the courage to journey on. Until he reached the real world. That's New York City. Notice the Empire State Building there and some other well known features of the city. At least I think it is. The real world was a strange place. No kids were eating cake. 
No one stopped to hear the music. And everyone needed nap time. saw something familiar. So he followed. You see that right there? You see the tail of kind of a, what looks like a magical or imaginary creature? Looks kind of different, but Beagle notices it. He had a good feeling about this place, but he looked everywhere, and he could not find his friend. That's my favorite right there. Everybody that knows me knows I love octopus um, as a, my favorite animal. And that's a kind of an interesting looking blue one right there. He climbed to the top of a tree and looked out, wishing and hoping his friend would come. That big tree. No one came. See Beagle sitting up there, way high up in the tree, just waiting, waiting for his friend. He thought about how far he'd come and how long he'd waited and felt very sad. Then he heard a noise below. Hello? See that little person down there? She's giving him something. Her face was friendly and familiar, and there was something about her that felt just right. And look at that picture she's drawn. We saw that picture on, um, on the page before, which is quite interesting. Here, let me show you. There it is. There's the picture we saw in the book. And then later on, there's the picture the little girl drew. Very, very similar. At first, they weren't sure what to do. Neither of them had made a friend before. But, after a little while, they realized they were perfect together. They introduced themselves. Hi, Beagle. I'm Beagle. Beagle and Alice had many new adventures. They shared their snacks. They told funny jokes. The world began to feel a little less strange. This is a great illustration. If you look closely, you can see those are all pictures that she's drawn. And they're all pictures from the story in the book. Hmm, it's interesting. And together they did the unimaginable. The Adventures of Beagle, the Unimaginary Friend. So some of you might be wondering, well, why is it that the pictures in the book, the story that we were experiencing, um, how did she have all of those drawings? Where, where was the story coming from? Anybody want to think about that for a moment? Where was the story that we were experiencing, where was it coming from? Now, if some of you thought that it was coming from the imagination of Alice, you're exactly right. Alice imagined the whole thing, including uh, Beagle. Or maybe, hmm, 
Or maybe it is like Beagle said. Maybe he was off waiting somewhere to be imagined. It's interesting to think. I think that's one of the fun things about this book, to think that maybe there's another place out there where all these imaginary friends are sitting and waiting to be imagined. Because if that's true, then they're not really imagined at all. They were, they're real. And they are kind of real to those of uh, you or us that have them. Well, I hope you enjoyed, people. Not sure what we're going to do tomorrow. Keep looking through my books and trying to decide what students would like. Plus, there's lots of different age students, um, I think, or I hope, that are watching these. Um, I, I understand they're probably not for 7th or 8th graders, but um, maybe I'll do a read aloud of like a short novel or short story uh, if any older students want to take a look. I have a, a very favorite a short story of mine called All Summer in a Day. Maybe I'll read that one. We'll see. Well, I hope you had fun. See everybody tomorrow.